take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care. Town baseball that started in Murray County um, started just about 10 years after the 1862 U.S. Dakota War. Within 10 years in those same pastures, there were organized baseball teams. And those teams became almost an institution that gathered people uh, similar to the churches and to the businesses and to the schools. Uh, in fact, there were town teams often before there were even towns. And now the town teams sustain community. It gives small communities something to rally around and be proud of. Well, it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Town baseball and baseball in general was a passion of people. It was their entertainment on Sunday afternoon. There wasn't movie theaters, there wasn't uh, uh, TV, radio, there was, this is what people did for social activity on Sundays. Town baseball was the entertainment outlet for people. So when it was billed and um, events were pulled off the same way as an entertainer coming to town. You'd have a picnic, you'd bring your lunch, you'd watch the baseball game, uh, you'd root for your home team. If you brought your car uh, it, in the 19 teens, you'd bring your car and you'd park it on one side of the field. And if you brought your horse and buggy, uh, you'd park it on the other side of the field. They were separate. They didn't park them all together. One of the most noted leagues in the county, we had three teams that belonged to what was called the First Night League, which started in 1948. And that is just as it its title says it was the first league in the state that played all of their games at night because all of the fields had electrical lighting. Black baseball teams came through southern Minnesota often. It was important for several reasons. One of them was how blacks were accepted at that time. They came through teams like the St. Paul Colored Gophers, the Tennessee Rats, the All Nations team, the Chicago Union Giants made regular trips through southern Minnesota. We've seen uh, newspaper articles that say some of the greatest players ever came through uh, southern Minnesota at that time. It's important for people to understand how the spread of baseball didn't matter what color a person was, it mattered how great they played and people came out to watch. Blacks weren't able to play professional baseball, they were barred from that. They created their own teams and they traveled the country to try and make money. Those teams would come and play an exhibition game with the local town teams. And they'd get a flat fee for coming and then they'd get a part of the gate fee as well. And so they could make some money by playing baseball in these small towns. Later on, there were uh, people playing on the teams here in the area that were black. John Donaldson came here in the early 1920s and played with Lismore. He was a paid pitcher. Um, later on in the 1940s, they hired um, uh, semi-professional and professional black baseball players to play in the first night league and they were paid positions and they began to integrate baseball at that time in the in the late 1940s. We actually had segregated baseball from the mid-20s until 1947. So while there were players like John Donaldson that, that in fact did play for individual teams, any team that attempted to be a part of the system that advanced to the state tournament couldn't have an African-American player on it or it couldn't be an all-black team. So all of the all-black teams that played during those times were really independent teams, sometimes playing within leagues, but were kept out of playoffs. Segregation, again, just primarily went because people were biased about somebody's color and the fear of that they were different. As Jackie Robinson uh, broke the color barrier, uh, here in these town teams, that barrier had already been broken by someone like John Donaldson. 
John Donaldson it was a great Negro League baseball player. He was six foot tall, um, about 200 pounds, and was a power left-handed pitcher. He played um, for 35 seasons, started in 1908 and went to 1943. He played all over the upper Midwest, uh, played in over 130 cities in Minnesota alone. One of the reasons John Donaldson was great was that he was a major leaguer who couldn't play in the major leagues. He um, drew crowds based on them coming to see him play because they knew he was a major leaguer. People loved baseball and they wanted to see major league talent and when John Donaldson was in their town they knew that and so thousands and thousands of people came out to see him play because they knew he was a major leaguer. He would r routinely strike out 20 players in a uh, in a town in Minnesota, South Dakota, or the upper Midwest, and beat everybody in your town, and then you'd ask him to come back the next year because the crowd was so big, your baseball team could make money that way. His legacy was taken away from him. He pitched for 35 years. Um, nobody, barely anybody, knows who he is now. It's important for us to tell his story and have his legacy restored. I couldn't aspire to anything We have about 39 seconds of John Donaldson playing baseball and it's really important because generations today need that visual component to see how he was great. I want to be loved by you You love to play and if you can get paid for playing that's a plus. He was making $450 a month here in Minnesota that was a pretty big salary for anybody at that point in time. That's a lot of money. But at the same time, I think we all have those, those aspirations to be appreciated. Issues of racism were prevalent all the time. And, uh, John Donaldson faced that everywhere he went. He took a very progressive attitude towards that. And we have newspaper reports that quote him as saying, he gets shouted um, racial epithets all the time, but he's being paid to be there, which is a very progressive attitude. He always said that he wondered why he wouldn't be respected as a man and why he had to take the abuse from the crowd, but he understood he was getting paid. And so he moved on and tried not to let that bother him. But issues of racism were everywhere. If, if we go into 1947, when Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier, it's very interesting to me because some of the great black baseball players that played at least in the Twin Cities had stopped playing by the time they got to high school because there was no place to go until Jackie breaks the color barrier. But even then, when Jackie Robinson retires after playing 10 years, in 1956 or before the 1956 season, there are still three teams that are segregated in Major League Baseball. I believe the issue of racism hasn't changed. It's an individual idea portrayed upon someone else. I think that it's important that we learn from the past and understand that people did live through those things and, and let's not be doomed to do that again ourselves. I think it's important to know that in this great state where we have baseball is, is a part of our tradition, it would be good to know all of the players that were very good players, regardless of what they looked like. If they were a good baseball player, we should talk about them as a baseball player first, and then as an individual second, of who they were, what color they may have been. It, it really shouldn't matter. I think town ball has been important to these small rural communities in that it gives a community a reason to be in a town when, in a time when towns are losing population, they've helped build and helped sustain a sense of cohesiveness in these small rural communities. And that's been important uh, ever since the first baseball player stepped onto one of those pastures picked up a baseball bat.
This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts, offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota. Explore hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for a great vacation or a place to hold an event. ExploreAlex.com. Tri-State Brain and Spine Institute. With locations in Alexandria, Edina, Crookston, and Maple Grove. Doctors dedicated to evaluating and treating all types of brain and spine problems, no matter how complex. 